just east of the Everglades. Some call it the Magic City. Others simply the 305. All I know, there are many reasons to love this popular city on Florida's Gold Coast. Bienvenida on Miami. Welcome to Miami. It's diverse culture, unbeatable cuisine, nightlife, shopping, entertainment, art, white sand beaches, nature, and so many activities for the active lifestyle. Cause over 25 million people from all over the world to visit Miami, making it the second most visited city in the U.S. Miami lo tiene todo. This is the first of a two video series. Our next video will show Miami Beach from North Beach to the famous South Beach, including the chain of islands between downtown and the beaches. In this video, we are going to take you around downtown and some of the vibrant neighborhoods around Miami. Ride the new Brightline train to Fort Lauderdale and back. Show the restaurants in Little Havana. Oh, the food. My heart is in Havana. Oh, no, no, eh. We'll ride the Thriller speedboat, take a night cruise, and show you the many other boat tours of Miami, including an airboat ride. The Miami Riverwalk will take you to five shopping entertainment districts, the Miracle Mile in Coral Gables, the modern Brickall City Center, the artsy Miami Design District, the quaint brunch cafes of Coconut Grove, and Miami's number one attraction, Bayside Marketplace. Miami is full of art. We'll show you the Super Blue Museum and Wynwood Walls. We also explore the nature of Miami, from an alligator in the Everglades to a sea lion at the Sea Aquarium. Bike the Rickenbacker Causeway to Key Biscayne and show Cape Florida State Park. Travel to Fairchild Botanical Gardens, where we meet a dog named B.B. Pickles. Parasail over Biscayne Bay. We run into Mike Tyson. You gotta understand you to be free. So if you're thinking about going to Miami, Grab a cafe con leche and get ready to take some notes. A city whose excitement never fails. In 1874, a lady from Cleveland arrived in Florida with her dad. She saw the potential of this area that was nothing more than a big mosquito-infested swamp. She convinced Henry Flagler to bring his Florida East Coast Railroad to Miami. In 1896, the city was incorporated, making Miami the only U.S. city to be founded by a woman. While the city wasn't very magical back then, Flagler had New York writer E.V. Blackman write an article to attract visitors, and it was he that named it the Magic City. The name Miami comes from the Miami Indian tribe that once lived here. Today, Miami has the third largest skyline in the U.S. with over 300 sky rises. It is the largest cruise ship port in the world. As of the 2020 census, the Miami metro area is now the eighth largest metro area in the U.S., ranked in 2018 as the third richest city in the world, second in the U.S. It is now over 70% Hispanic. While technically English is the official language, in many places Spanish is really the dominant language. The Freedom Tower, used in the 1960s to process refugees from communist Cuba, today serves as a museum to those hardworking Cubans who have had such a great impact in the culture of Miami. No better place to see that than in Little Havana, where I'm going to get some cafe con leche at the El Pub restaurant. There's also La Colada Gourmet across the street. We'll come back to Little Havana later and show you the restaurants. But for now, we have a Brightline train to catch. Driving in Miami can be a real pain, so the more you can use public transportation, I think the more fun you'll have. Brightline has a huge terminal in downtown. You park in the Miami Central Garage. Sometime in 2022, Miami's other commuter rail, the Tri-Rail, will also serve this station. The tracks are already laid. Both Tri-Rail and Brightline currently travel to West Palm Beach. Tri-Rail is a little slower, but has more stops, including Miami Airport. 
Also, the Metro Mover, Wilkie D. Ferguson Station is here. Brightline is pet friendly, and there is a grassy area across from the station. The Brightline staff is extremely helpful. There are plenty of eateries in the station. On the ground floor, there's Joe the Juice Cafe. On the second floor, El Amia Cafe Bakery and other restaurants and bars. From Miami to West Palm Beach, it's $15 to $19. To Fort Lauderdale, $10 to $14. A premium ticket is about $13 to $24 more. But with that, you get access to the premium lounge, where there are free snacks and drinks, as well as free snacks and drinks while on the train. So for me, it was worth it to go premium, having a small breakfast with yogurt and a granola bar. Also a nice little table to get some work done. Being we are headed to Fort Lauderdale, I'd figure i watch this Fort Lauderdale travel guide by Tampa Aerial Media. We pass the Fort Lauderdale airport and arrive in downtown. Later in 2022, Brightline will add a stop in Boca Raton, and in early 2023, we'll go all the way to Orlando. And plans are in the works to connect it all the way to Tampa. On their return trip, ran into these nice people from the UK. So how, how does this compare to the trains in England? It's, it's smooth. Yeah. I right. can't wait for it to take off because I think it's going to be the smoothest flight I've ever had. Before we head back to Little Havana, going to take an airboat ride in the Everglades. There are several options for airboat rides. I saw two that were dog friendly. There was Miami Everglades connection, but with them you had to do a private ride to bring a dog. And that was at least $200. So I chose Coopertown airboats, which allow dogs on the public tours, which are $26 for adults and $15 for children 6 to 11. Their website is a little outdated, but the ride was great. Excellent tour guide with a great sense of humor. Is, if I am not faster than you, I can trip you, kick you, punch you, whatever I gotta do to be a little bit faster. I did this tour about an hour and 20 minutes before sunset which is the best time for lighting. The sunlight is soft and warm, yet it is bright enough to see everything. I highly recommend them. We arrived back at Little Havana on Calle Ocho. That's 8th Street in Spanish. It is here you'll find eateries, cigar shops, bars and souvenirs. Taste some gourmet ice cream and sorbet in Cuban and tropical flavors, Azacar ice cream. Maximo Gomez Park, better known as Domino Park, where the locals play dominoes and chess. Parking can be hard to find in the late afternoons and evenings. You might want to try this double-decker tour that takes you to the Art Deco District, Coconut Grove in Little Havana. You can hop on and hop off. Pick up a Cuban hat or a guayabera. That's a Cuban shirt from El Papa, who owns Diaz's Guayaberas. For food, there's Old Havana's Cuban Bar and Cochina with live music. The El Pub restaurant that we had coffee from earlier. Enjoy tacos, antojitos, quesadillas, and burritas at El Santo Taqueria. I chose this El Cristo restaurant. On the menu, they have this Bandeja El Cristo. It's a Cuban platter. It gives you a good variety of Cuban beef, roasted pork, black beans, yuca, and tamal. Perfect if you are a gringo like me and want to taste some Cuban cuisine. Delicioso! After a good night's sleep at La Quinta Airport East, which I'll show at the end of the video, we are heading south on a scenic drive through Coral Gables on Old Cutler Road, heading to Fairchild Tropical Gardens. I recommend this drive early in the day with the morning sun glistening through the unique vintage trees. Just beautiful. We filmed the gardens on a cloudy day, but had to do it on this day because every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., they allow you to bring a dog. BB Pickles here enjoying the morning at the garden. What's a, your dog's name? Her name is BB Pickles. BB, hey BB Pickles, that's a great name for a dog. <laughs> this is an 83 acre botanical garden with an extensive collection of rare tropical plants. It is $25 for adults, $12 for children, 6 to 17. Ran into Rita here, who is a subscriber of ours. She works at the Glass House Cafe. Yeah, a lot of people coming in, and, some, and on Halloween, we do a costume party instead for the adults, we do yeah. it for the, for the dog. Heading back towards downtown Coral Gables, the Old Cutler Trail runs along Old Cutler Road, a 13.5 mile trail that ends at this roundabout at Cartagena Park. You can park here. This is where the Commodore Trail begins, a five mile trail that runs along Main Highway and Bayshore Drive takes you through Coconut Grove and along several parks, including Peacock Park that we'll show in a little bit, as well as the Vizcaya Museum. 
The Venetian Pool, a spring water from an underground aquifer public pool, is one of Coral Gables' most popular attractions. It is $16 for adults, $11 for children, but closed December and January. The Biltmore, a landmark of Coral Gables. The Biltmore Tennis Center and Golf Course surround the hotel. Downtown Coral Gables, known for its high-end shopping, at the Miracle Mile and Tree Lime Boulevards. When in Miami, it's good to download this pay-by-phone app. Makes paying for parking convenient. The Miracle Mile, while still nice, but with the rise of other shopping entertainment districts like Burkhall City Center in Miami Design District, it is not the happening place that it was. I think it needs a little bit of an update. Other areas in Coral Gables, like the shops at Merrick Park, an outdoor mall just 20 blocks from the Miracle Mile, is more modern and nicer. The Coral Gables trolley is free and runs every 10 to 12 minutes, weekdays and Saturdays, up to 8 p.m. Just three miles southeast of downtown Coral Gables is Coconut Grove, or the locals simply refer to as The Grove. This is the perfect place for morning coffee or brunch, several cafes with outdoor seating. I'm going to Panther Coffee to have some quiche Lorraine with a cup of brew and enjoy the sidewalk seating. I was pleasantly surprised, not much of a wait, not very crowded. Maybe that's because there is a big chain coffee shop across the street you may have heard of. On the corner of Main Highway and Commodore Plaza, you have two good patio eateries. On the right, Lulu's, a tapas bar and restaurant, open late on weekends. And across the street, the Green Street Cafe with American Eats. Or try Mexican food at the Taco Way. Between this dining district and Dinner Key Marina are multiple parks with paved trails and an outdoor fitness gym area to get a little workout in before I go parasailing. Dinner Key Marina is located along South Bayshore Drive next to the Miami City Hall. This is where you find Miami water sports at Pier 9 here. However, the public parking is over here near City Hall. There are parking spots closer to the piers, but they are for the marina staff, not for the public. With Miami Water Sports, you can rent jet skis, hobby cats, kayaks, and paddle boards, go flyboarding, or ride the banana boat, which is a long tube ride while being pulled by a motorboat. It is $55 per person. The parasailing is $129 per person. You book either the 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. slot or the 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. slot. I was there at 9.30 a.m. and it was over 90 minutes before the first boat went out because you're waiting for everyone to fill out their waivers, something I think which could be speeded up if they would send you a link to that waiver when you first book. So it takes up more time than it should. It's not like other parasailing companies I've done, where you book a certain time and you go right out at that time, taking care of all your waivers online before you arrive. However, once we went out, it was great. Kyle and Landon, our guides, were excellent and fun. Marlo and Orva here, visiting from Atlanta, went up first. The total time on the boat is about an hour, and the flight time they say on the website is about seven to 12 minutes. However, in our case, it was about five to six minutes. 30 seconds until touchdown. But still worth it. They give you the option if you want to be splashed in the ocean before you land. Landing gear now down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Pulling the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. We now head towards Key Biscayne. Also in Coconut Grove is the Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. This is a 1916 Italian Renaissance waterfront estate home with 32 decorated rooms and 10 acres of formal gardens. Tickets must be purchased online and is $25 for adults, $10 for children, 6 through 12. The Rickenbacker Causeway connects Virginia Key and Key Biscayne with the mainland. Along the causeway is Hobie Island Beach Park. If you don't have a Hobie Cat or windsurfing setup, you can rent one from Miami Water Sports here. You can also bike along the causeway or just park and lay out on the beach. I have my Timber Ridge beach cart, 
Love this cart. You can throw everything into the cart and you have everything you need at the beach with big wheels that easily roll over the sand. And Bella seems to love it. I put an Amazon link in the description below. It's easy to fold up and put away. By using our links, it helps us to pay for making these videos. The bridge to Virginia Key has a pedestrian path. Makes for a nice walk or jog with a great view of the Miami skyline. On the other side of the bridge is a long fishing pier, part of the old Rickenbacker Causeway. On Virginia Key is the Miami Sea Aquarium. If you book online, it is $48 for adults, $40 for kids, nine and under. That is with taxes and fees. There are marine mammal shows with dolphins and sea lions, exhibits with manatees, sea turtles, penguins, and a touch tank with rays. For an additional charge, you can swim with a dolphin or seal, or do a penguin or dolphin encounter. In Discovery Bay, view a green sea turtle, or see a California sea lion just chilling. Now crossing the bridge onto Key Biscayne. At the end of Key Biscayne is Bill Bagg's Cape Florida State Park and the Cape Florida Lighthouse, which is the oldest structure in Miami-Dade County. Built in 1825, visitors can climb the 109 steps to the tower as part of a tour five days a week at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. The tower is closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. No extra fee for the lighthouse, but it is an $8 per vehicle entry fee for the state park. The west side of the island provides areas for fishing with a walking trail around the edge. On the other side of the lighthouse, the east side of the island, is Cape Florida Beach with beach chairs and umbrellas already set up available for rent with lighthouse beach rentals. $25 for one umbrella and two chairs. This beach also has a handicap accessible crossover to the beach from the parking lot. You can rent these quadricycles or beach cruisers with lighthouse beach rentals. The Lighthouse Cafe is here, a seafood restaurant. There is also another restaurant on the west side of the island, the Boulder's Grill, with Latin food overlooking No Name Harbor. Boulder is able to dock along the harbor. During busier periods, they will have this food trailer. Picnic tiki huts located around the harbor as well. Heading back on the causeway. Miami has a tropical climate, therefore weather can change quickly. It can be a bright sunny day, then all of a sudden stormy and rainy and then before you know it, back to sunshine. On the north end of Virginia Key is the Rusty Pelican, a great seafood restaurant, excellent views of the Miami skyline and sunset. Now finally to Miami's number one visited attraction, the Bayside Marketplace, located in downtown on Biscayne Bay. A two-story open shopping center, lots of green space in front and next to Bayfront Park with a view of the impressive skyline of Miami. We'll give you a tour around the marketplace later, but for now we have a speedboat ride to catch. It is here that you can board about 95% of the boat tours of Miami. First up is the Thriller Speedboat, passing by the Biscayne Lady, a yacht charter you can rent for an event or a wedding. We have shown you these before by drone in our Clearwater Beach video and previous Miami video. But this time we are taking you on the boat, riding the green hurricane boat. It's the newer boat of their fleet. I don't know if there's any difference in the ride with the other yellow thriller boats. In my opinion, this is the most fun 45 minutes you can spend in Miami. As the name suggests, it's a thrill ride. It is $38 for adults, $29 for children, 3 to 11. Be aware the boat gets rocky at times, so if you have any back or medical issues, take that into account. Only service dogs are allowed, but again, have a good restraint on your animal, because the boat hops up and down pretty good. The boat does slow down around the celebrity homes on Star Island with a narrated tour, and then it speeds up again, takes you out through the inlet into the Atlantic, and goes a pretty good distance around South Beach. We make our way back passing the South Point Park Pier. We will come back to South Beach in our next video, but for now, we still have a lot in downtown to show you. We arrive back at Bayside Marketplace. We'll show you the rest of the boat tours later, but let's show you another form of transportation to see Miami. On weekends, I recommend parking in the Bayside Garage early because in late afternoons and evening, it gets pretty crowded. 
I chose to park here all day and just take the Metro Mover to the other places of interest. This People Mover is free to ride and very frequent, about every three minutes. So a good way to move around downtown and gives you a scenic view of Miami. Some of the places of interest where there is a Metro Mover station are the Frost Museum of Science, the Perez Art Museum, and the Miami Riverwalk. We are taking it to the Brook Hall City Center. Brick Hall is a neighborhood full of glittering business towers and luxury condos on the other side of the Miami River. With rooftop bars and surf and turf grills, the Brick Hall City Center is a modern chic shopping mall with a variety of eateries, art galleries, and fashionable boutiques. Near the metro station as you first walk into the city center is Chi, a Latin Asian fusion dining and nightlife venue that includes the Mercado Restaurant. Modeled after a Chinese-themed market, this is a grab-and-go eatery with a garden and lounge area overlooking the city's skyline. Next to the Mercado is Passion del Cielo, an espresso bar with plenty of baked items. For coal-fired Cuban cuisine, try Marabou. You can see a movie with a dinner at CMX Movie Theaters. Also, the Stone Sports Bar. The Brico City Center has over four levels of dining, shopping, and entertainment spread across three city blocks. I got my coffee, now it's time to head to the Miami Riverwalk. The Riverwalk is one area where I think Tampa and Fort Lauderdale does a little better job than Miami. While Miami is very scenic and nice, just not the eateries nor the easily accessible water recreation options you see in Tampa. Although there is a good eatery, AWA Miami, an Asian restaurant with dining right on the river. Best way to see the river is on a boat or a floating tiki bar with Miami Cruising Tiki's. It is $60 for a 90 minute cruise or rent the whole tiki from $350 to $450. They are located next to the Sky Wheel between Bayside Marketplace and Bayfront Park. Another place you can get to by public transportation is the Super Blue Museum. You have to take the Metro Rail Orange Line train to the Santa Clara station. There is limited parking here, so good to take Metro Rail. In our six days of filming Miami, one day had rain, so we used that day to do the museums. Super Blue is an immersive art experience with some interactive exhibits, like this room where you touch the walls and the image changes. Parts of it are self-guided and others you stick with a group. It is $39 for adults and $34 for children, 3 through 12 if booked online. There's a Blue Rider Cafe here as well for food. Across the street from Super Blue is the Rubel Museum. A mile and a half east of Super Blue is the Wynwood Walls, which feature huge colorful street murals by artists from all over the globe. It is $12 to enter. You buy your tickets with these ATM machines near the entrance. There is art all over this neighborhood, so you can view a lot of murals even if you don't enter the Wynwood Walls area. Just a mile north of Wynwood Walls is the Miami Design District, a modern shopping dining area with luxury fashion and celebrity chef restaurants amidst an artsy open air environment. One of the things that you can design here is a Tesla Model 3, the best selling electric car in the world. Try a Japanese dessert with this Japao kiosk or some modern French cuisine at L'Atelier de Joël Robuchon. The Tomorrowland within the design district features a series of playfully designed sculptures, seating, and ornamentation. The Fly's Eye Dome, a geodesic dome designed by inventor Buckminster Fuller. The Mia Market, a gourmet food hall with a variety of global dining options, anchored by a craft cocktail bar. Now heading back to Bayfront Marketplace. You know, every time I film here, Bayfront Park is closed off because of an event. Two years ago, it was the Super Bowl. On this day, there was a fitness competition happening at Bayside Marketplace, as well as great ethnic food. You can pick up souvenirs like at the Tin Man. You know, Oz never gave nothing to the Tin Man that he didn't already have. I needed to pick up a more Miami-ish attire at this Caribbean Life shop, as well as a coffee mug. Prices was pretty reasonable. I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, now I'm getting hungry. There's the Segafredo Bayside in the center of the marketplace with Italian food and coffee during the day and cocktails and live music at night. There's the Mambo Cafe for Cuban food with live music on weekends. The Hard Rock Cafe with a lounge shark bar and grill below. 
The new observation wheel is $17 for adults, $15 for kids 4 to 11. Each ride is 12 to 15 minutes. Near the observation wheel, on the second floor, you can walk through the Dino Safari. I'm going to pick up some Argentinian food here at the Knife Steakhouse. This is Pariana with Argentinian mixed vegetables. Really good. Had a nice conversation with Will here about freedom. When yeah. you understand life, that's your freedom. Yeah. Freedom will come, just be freedom. You got to understand you to be free. When night falls on Miami, the energy around Bayside Marketplace increases to a new level with the bars, nightclubs, and night cruises. Now time to show you the other boat tours. There's Spirit Yacht Charters with a two-hour tour on a snorkel and sail cruise or a sightseeing cruise. Aboard a catamaran, $65 for adults, $30 for kids, $20 discount for seniors. There's Bay Ride Tours, a 90-minute cruise, $21 for adults, $14 for children, 4 through 12. Captain Jimmy's Fiesta Cruises, a day celebrity cruise, $25 for adults, $17 for children. For a night party cruise, add $3. Island Queen Cruises, a 90-minute cruise, a millionaire's row, $28 for adults and $20 for children, 4 through 12. In Miami Aqua Tours, with a 90-minute cruise on the El Oro Pirate Ship, $35 for adults and $20 for children, 4 through 12. Or for the same rates, you can also take the sightseeing cruise on the Island Princess, which is what we are going to do. Always recommend to do a night cruise when you are in Miami. Just a great view of the skyline with the reflection on the water, as well as the celebrity homes along Star Island. A big cruise all lit up, headed out to the Caribbean. I will advise on this particular cruise, there was explicit music. So if looking for a family-friendly cruise, you might want to check on that ahead of time. <laughs> As we are nearing the end of our video, want to point out another really good restaurant, especially if you are flying into Miami. It's on the edge of the airport, the 94th Aero Squadron. Kids like me will love it because you can listen to the Miami Control Tower with headphones and a view of the planes and the trains that go by. While I'm currently having dinner here, this coming weekend I plan to have brunch here after filming a conference in Miami because their brunch is out of this world. For lodging, we stayed at the pet-friendly La Quinta Airport East. It's a good, clean hotel, very reasonable rates, close to three major highways of Miami, and has a good grassy area. Just note, though, that the planes from the airport fly right overhead, so if you are a light sleeper, be aware at around 6.30 a.m. you start to hear the rumble of the jets. A couple of years ago, we watched Air Force One and the President fly right overhead. It was awesome. Yes, Miami has a lot of traffic, and you will see a lot of aggressive drivers, sometimes a little rude, and finding parking can be a real pain. But the payoff for dealing with all of that is an experience like few cities can offer. It is a vacation destination that you really do want to take some time to plan for. Check on parking ahead of time. Know the routes you are going to take. Think of the time of day. And if done right, I think you will leave this city with a feeling of wow. Eso fue divertido. Also, don't go right back to work after, because you might need a couple of days to recover from your Miami getaway. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. We started using the GoPro Hero 10 with our shots on the Thriller speedboat, and the image stabilization was great. I put a link below. It really helps us to pay for these videos when you use our Amazon affiliate links. We are not done with Miami yet. Next, we head to Miami Beach and show you the world famous South Beach. From the magic city, bendiciones, perdón, ti donde quiera que estés. <laughs>